But what what's the saying? If you can make it in New York, then you can make it anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another episode of the Fifth Wall Future World Vodcast, where we bring you the latest advancements on climate tech and all things climate news related. My name is Cedric Char, and I am a VP here on the Fifth Wall Climate Team, and I'm here with Fran. You want to give a? I mean, yeah, <laughs> Fran, I'm Fran, I'm a VP on the uh, Fifth Wall Climate Tech Team as well. Awesome. So, what are we talking about today, Fran? Today we're going to talk about retrofits. We're going to, you know, go over a little primer about what they are, why they're important, and then also go into a concrete example. Maybe give some ideas from our portfolio companies as well. So, I mean, I can kick us off here、um, and just give a couple of stats as to why we even care about this. And so, why do we care about retrofits? Well, in the U.S., we will need to triple our retrofit rate to meet, meet net zero targets. With 80% of today's office buildings that will likely still be in use by 2050, according to reports sent by the Facilities Dive by JLL, a commercial real estate services company. Interesting. So, friend, let's just level set for all our viewers and listeners out there. What is retrofitting buildings entail, and and what does that mean in terms of energy efficiency and carbon emissions? Yeah. So, I think about you know energy retrofitting is literally. Putting renewable energy solutions into buildings to make them use less fossil fuels, and so that so just to give some concrete examples, that can be adding a heat pump, putting solar panels on your roof, batteries,、um, upgrading your to LED lighting, whatever it may be. All of that kind of counts within the energy retrofit space. Got it. Got it.、Uh, I think the first step would be kind of doing an energy audit of the building, so kind of looking at a building's energy consumption profile, you know, the grid intensity, and just kind of mapping out your energy use and emissions. And then, you know, once you have a picture of that, then you can kind of start strategically planning these projects and kind of stack ranking them. Whether it it makes more sense to do, you know, a window retrofit upgrade versus HVAC versus versus lighting, and kind of looking at it from a a Capex perspective, and then you know ROI and and payback for for both the building owner and then the tenants as well. So that's at least my understanding. You know, of course, I haven't done one personally. Maybe touching on the tenant point more. Just curious. You know, have you seen any benefits or you know disadvantages of these building owners to their tenants to doing these、uh, retrofit projects? Some of the the bigger challenges for building owners on the tenant side is like you know they're the ones paying for. A lot of these upgrades, but oftentimes the tenant's the one getting the benefits, and so that's like one thing. It's like you, you, you as the tenant will have lower energy bills、mm-hmm. because of these things that are on your building now, and so it costs a lot of money for the building owner, but will improve the tenants that way. So that's kind of one of the challenges for the building owners, but it is a benefit to tenant. And then the other side, oftentimes a lot of these also help with you know, air quality and just make it more comfortable for the tenant too. If you have You know, energy efficiency upgrades. A lot of them also are good at like regulating temperature control, and there are other and like HVACs can also do air purification depending on the specific company that you pick. Gotcha, gotcha. So what you're saying is there's a pretty big kind of split incentive or incentive misalignment between tenants and building、uh, and landlords, especially in the commercial real estate space. I think in commercial real estate, there's probably a little bit, maybe a little bit less even, just because right now the You know, you're trying to win tenants over, and so maybe it's an incentive from that perspective.、Mm-hmm. Um, but from the like day to day use, sure. So if you have a tenant already in the building, locked into a 20 year lease, maybe there is less of an incentive for you to retrofit. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you think the the landlords and building owners are able to charge you know higher rents and kind of increase their income with these you know offering these climate friendly amenities? Do the the tenants care about that at all? I think tenants would care about that, and it's like you know I haven't actually made those purchasing decisions myself, but I think tenants do care about that. We're seeing a lot of you know corporations thinking about their net zero goals, so if they're trying to pick a new lease now, that is definitely part of the equation. It would reduce their overall net,、um, their overall energy consumption too as a company, and so why wouldn't they care about that? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, maybe getting your take on like ways to accelerate the. Retrofit kind of adoption and penetration rate in the market, just given this this whole kind of tenant landlord misalignment. Yeah, it is so challenging. I mean, we are seeing some examples coming through it, with through regulation. I mean, local law ninety seven being a big one,、mm-hmm. it does push a lot of people to do that. And maybe this one is a little. This is more for in Europe, but in Europe, a lot of different countries have, like Germany, France, and the UK, have these regulations coming through that if you're 
building doesn't hit a certain energy efficiency grade by 2025 and then like it continues to ratchet up after that you can't rent that building out whatsoever. So yep. those are like very real incentives for you to retrofit, of course. And I think California also recently came out with one, the SB253 as well. Got it, got it. So it's all stick, you're saying, and no no carrot from, from a regulatory perspective. At least not that I've seen. Maybe, uh, have you seen anything that seems more like a carrot? I the... guess the IRA, potentially? Yeah, I, I think the IRA with some energy efficiency incentives. Yeah. But yeah, I think maybe more on the carrot side would be like, at least from what I've seen, more along the lines of like business model innovation and kind of doing these like, you know, uh, energy as a service or call it like energy, like payback through your energy savings models. Yeah. 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 So, Ren, I guess, are there any reasons why, you know, these uh, building owners, particularly in the commercial real estate space, wouldn't want to do these retrofits? It seems, you know, a, a win win for everyone involved. You know, you, there's an upfront cost, of course, but in the long run, you know, you'll end up saving money through energy savings. Is there any reason why people wouldn't want to do it? Yeah, I think it's maybe less of a like don't want to. It's that right now there are a lot of other challenges going on for commercial real estate for everybody, but certainly commercial real estate included in that, such as you know, super high interest rates, like them worrying about maybe defaulting on loans or whatever it may be. There's mm -hmm. just a lot of macro things going on that maybe they're distracted away from thinking about this and it is a very important issue but they have a lot of different things on their plate that all cost money and so making that decision to spend more money right now is kind of difficult yeah for sure but just the tight. substantially higher vacancy rates and nordstrom moving out of you know downtown sf and yeah that makes sense all right so having said all of that of course this is as we said it's very difficult are there any ways that fifth floor or on some of our portfolio companies can be helpful here yeah, for sure. Shameless plug warning. But we got, you know, we got a number of portfolio companies, you know, starting from kind of the beginning of the process, you know, N0 can plug into buildings energy data and get kind of real time and granular energy use and data. And so they can, you know, help with the strategic planning and retrofitting recommendations. We've got Runwise who are making boilers and, and water heaters much more energy efficient, you know, reducing energy costs and, and consumption by call it, you know, 20, 25% right off the bat. We've got, you know, our newest announcement of our investment in Mojave. They're about to do liquid desiccant based HVAC systems for commercial real estate, helping building owners save, you know, call it 50% of energy. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of skin the cat here. I think there's no gonna not gonna be any silver bullet and, you know, these building owners will need all the solutions that they can get. I think it'd be nice if we could talk through a, a real example of a successful retrofitting that's happened because it is just a complex problem. And so I think everyone needs some help here. The one example I was thinking of is the retrofitting of the New York Empire State Building, and it's made to become one of the world's most energy efficient buildings now. According to the article, you know, through a combination of projects, including retrofitting of all the 6,514 windows, reusing 90% of the original frames and glassware, the installation of 67 elevators that generate electricity instead of heat when breaking. The building has already reduced its energy consumption by more than 40% with annual energy savings of almost four and a half million, which is huge. So hats off to the folks at the Empire State Building. If you can do it in a historically significant old building like that, I feel like most other buildings should be pretty easy relatively. Exactly. What What's the saying? If you can make it in New York, then you can make it anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, to end on a positive note here. So when I think about retrofitting, it's good for multiple reasons. One is that it, of course, is good for energy consumption. So it's good for the world. It also can create jobs, adding to the good for the world piece. But it's also good for your wallet because you're saving money on instead of paying for a lot of energy. Amazing. Well, this was super fun talking about building retrofits. We're obviously actively ex investing and in exploring the space further. If you guys have any more questions, anything you want to hear, feel free to drop a note in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like. And yeah, we will see you guys next week. Awesome. Bye.